Hello, everyone. It's the Stardock stream. <laughs> it's Sorcerer King. Scott's laughing at me. Uh, it's just, your your voice is so soothing. It's it's I, <laughs> it's my buttery tones. <laughs> it's it's really silky smooth, man. <laughs> Uh, I'm Adam. That's Scott. He's uh, one of our developers on the Sorcerer King. On on Sorcerer King. It is not the Sorcerer King. Oh it's man! It's a battle did, that I'm so glad I won. Did we have ever have meetings about that? Oh my god! The things we have meetings about. It's so funny. We have meetings for our meetings. Uh, that's not even true. We're we're not that. Bad we're pretty about it. we're pretty lean. That we're not that bad about having too many yeah. meetings. There are way worse companies. Uh, so we are showing today uh, Sorcerer King, which is our fantasy 4x game. It's very exciting. It's asymmetrical, etc. cetera. Um, you've all seen it before. It's, uh, I, we weren't sure uh, version 0 0.751 might be the bug fix patch that you guys are getting tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we were, we I've were seen, little... I've seen some, it's, it's a build, <laughs> uh, but you guys are definitely getting one tomorrow and provided everything goes fine with QA, but the build's looking pretty solid. Uh, so we will put it, be putting up a beta two bug fix uh tomorrow if everything goes well so very cool so we are oh, what did we show last week i think we showed the guardian last played week. as the guardian i'm gonna pl nah it's i'm gonna to play you, as the tyrant all right should i talk about the priest a little bit you can talk about the priest okay so the priest is the uh oh i can't click on it um <laughs> priest is the sovereign that you guys will be getting with beta three uh in december um and right now, uh, we've been having a lot of internal discussion about what the priest should be. Uh, the Guardian's big thing, obviously, is geomancy. Um, they have lots of neat spells to heal the world, uh, tyrant, you know, getting benefits from uh, Doomsday and, and kind of being a doppelganger to the uh, Sorcerer King. So the priest, uh, we had laid out, like, you know, keeping the Doomsday counter down. So a big, big thing that people bring up is, you know, Doomsday scares me. I'm terrified <laughs> playing this game because I'm always got that bar breathing down my neck. He plays the priest, and then it kind of um, alleviates that a little bit. Um, a lot of enchantment stuff. And what we're throwing around right now is um, giving the priest uh, a new type of resource called uh, uh, Divine Favor hmm. and giving them a series of, like, big, like, big, fat, awesome... Uh, game twisting stuff that they can do basically calling for help from the heavens huh. um but you only you can only use it x number of times like a very finite resource something you're getting as you uh as you defeat lieutenants or as mm. you uh, go through your skill tree um so some you can basically bring in divine intervention that's kind of um, awesome. key points in the game so we what's fun about that is uh you can be uh with asymmetrical gameplay obviously we get the uh, we, we can make things big and crazy, uh, and by limiting it, we can even go a little bit crazier with them. So we'll have a lot of fun um, uh, beefing up the priest and making it a awesome sovereign to play when Beta Three comes along. Very cool. Beta Three is scheduled for December, so you guys should have that before the Christmas holiday. Um, so that is super exciting. We're very happy. Um, one of the things I wanted to address today, because it's been a little bit of an issue or, or, or a topic of the day, we'll say, on the forums, um, is the whole concept of legacy bugs and bugs and bug reporting and what we're actually working on and, and are, we, are we actually fixing any bugs and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and build your shard shrine, Scott. <laughs> where'd, before... your, where'd your buttery baritone go there? <laughs> There's no... Say it nicely and I'll do it. <laughs> Build the shard shrine. All stuff. right. I, um, how can I say no? Uh, the shard shrine. Shard shrine is, is a little too tongue twistery for me to really be properly buttery with it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the topic of, of bugs and legacy bugs and all that sort of thing. Um, I just wanted to reassure everyone that we we read the bug reports. We work on the bug reports all the time. We have a giant list of issues, content requests bugs, you know, things that we want to do. It's, it all goes in the queue, right? And it's like we have this giant queue of things that we're working on and things that each, each person on the development team is working on uh, that are, I mean, it, and it's just all, uh, it's, it's all, you know, has a priority to it, I guess. Um, and so, like, sometimes things, 
uh, don't get addressed for a little while. And that's frustrating for people who have been, who are annoyed by those bugs and I totally get it. But then, you know, it's, it's ultimately we have to make that call of whether or not <laughs> I'm not going to show you how big show with hands, how big the list is. Uh, I don't even know. That's it's an amusing idea, but no, <laughs> um, it, it's it's. I mean, it's the list of like everything we want to do, and then it's like there's pie in the sky ideas way down at the bottom, and there is oh my god, game breaking, horrible things way up at the top, and everything else in the middle, and we just we do everything that we can do, and I mean, the realistically, like every piece of software that you've ever used outside of maybe like Notepad, or calculator has a crazy long list of things that developers would like to do, especially anything that's in development. And so when you have your pet issue and you don't see it being worked on, I get that it's frustrating, but it's because we're working on other stuff. It's not because we're lazy. It's not because we don't know that it exists, although maybe we don't know it exists, and so please do send the bug report because we need those. Um, but uh, just, just rest assured that we're working on it. And like right now, for example, I don't know if it's in this build, uh, that Scott is playing, but we have a fix that will be uh, should be deployed to you guys uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I just tested. I think that it's in. Sweet. I... So, so you guys are getting a, a patch tomorrow. That that's a public patch, and everybody will get it. It's, it's really just bug fixes, but stuff like the movement bug that has been annoying people forever. It has been annoying me for. I, I have played a, a <laughs> lot of a lot of this game, a lot of the previous games. I hear you. The movement bug is finally fixed. Where. Uh, in terms of combining armies and splitting armies and all that kind of stuff, uh, is also the multi-turn move bug. I know that was something we talked about, about... Uh, 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 oh, long paths? Yeah. Uh, that's losing. on the list. It's okay. it's one of those bugs that isn't as easy to solve as we would like. So it's... Um, yeah, but it's definitely on our radar. So um, One of our... Commenters, Alstein just asked, will these bug fixes be backported to LH? Um, that's an interesting question. I'm... It's something that we've talked about, and it kind of depends on the bug, and it depends on the fix. Like, some of them are really easy to backport to F to LH and even FE. Uh, oh, see, that's that's what you get for auto-resolving. I, I thought that it was a singleton. Oh, man, we got to get that auto-resolve like change in. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, which, if you, if you weren't listening to the stream, what, last week or two weeks ago, uh, basically, one of the things that we want to do is add a some more feedback to the player when you see that battle initiation screen, so that you can see like I'm going to win overwhelmingly, which like yeah. means you will not lose anyone, mm -hmm. so that you can feel a little more safety in using the auto resolve for some of those more trivial combats. I'm going to test to see if the fix is in. All right. Okay. So this guy has three moves. This guy has four moves. I'm out uh, of the three moves. Oh my gosh! What if it doesn't work? Didn't what, what, what have you done? I don't know. Anyways. You're, well, you're out of moves anyway. Yeah, but wasn't that the issue? Well, no. You used all your move for the turn, didn't you? I wonder if I wonder if Battle Initiation used the turn. Used it, his other turn. Man, I, I wasn't paying close <laughs> enough attention to how you were actually moving, so let's I try couldn't it. tell you. Let's try that again. All right. Okay. You, you go. talk. I'm going to I'm gonna verify. Sounds like a plan. Uh Good question from Alstein. Uh, is the army management screen from LH going to be implemented yeah. into SK? Um, I don't know where we're at on an army management screen. Um, I know it's something that... Yeah, the stack stack management can get really clunky. Um, and I know that we... I mean, in yeah. theory, in theory, we want people to be able to manage their armies more or less from the right side tab, the armies tab there, to be able to see kind of where your dudes are and jump to your armies quickly. Now, that said, I have I personally have a bunch of issues with that tab. Like, it splits out individually every unit that's in a garrison right now, which is super annoying. Mm. Like, man, I really need to know where every single one of my administrators <laughs> is right now. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, but I, I think that there's, there's some fixes there, some improvements there that, that can really help out. Um, I don't know... I'm trying to even remember the LH uh, army management screen because I never used it, and I've played a ridiculous amount of LH. Um, it didn't come up often, but it's one of those things where once you have enough units mm -hmm. um, and you're, you know, you're, you're managing before a battle, like it's really nice to get in there and say, okay, let's pull this guy off the out of this army and into another one without having to use moves. Sure, you know, on the on the main map. 
Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of those interface things that are definitely part of, you know, the, the polish and, and iteration aspect of the game, uh, or of development, excuse me, that is going to be happening, you know, between now and release uh, early next year. So it's really a question of, again, priority. Where are our priorities, yeah. right? Like, what do we think is the most efficient way to spend our time? Because as much as like we're not going to release a game until it's until we think it's yeah. done and, and, and ready to release, we still don't have infinite time to work on the game, yeah. right? I mean, it's better than it was in the bad old days where Walmart would blow up your company if you missed a release date. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, we don't have infinite time. And so... It's, it's, there's so much iter there's so much um, implementation going on right now too. Right. Like we still have three sovereigns to get in. Um, there's there are big features that are being that we're paving the way for. So right. once um, you'll see tons and tons more bug fixes going on once we are past that initial implementation and right or iterating. So so that's kind of the issue. Um, I would say especially as far as like that interface stuff, the stuff that's important to you that you like do all the time or or you just find really annoying or whatever the case may be, um, go talk on the forums about it. Get uh, oh man, Shadow Shift. Does Shadow Shift still cost five hit points? Does it? It did. It did last time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. Five. Ugh. Yeah, it's too much. So it's so overcosted. Yeah. Um. But uh, what the hell was I talking about? I was talking about, uh, oh, interface improvements. Um, stuff that you really care about, make noise on the forums. Like, stump for it on the forums. It's, that's a you know, part of our decision-making process is paying attention to what people want. Did you cast Coercion on Athka yet, by the way? No. Jeez, do I have to do everything oh for my you? This is ridiculous. I'm not going gonna, gonna to do it. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't say it nice. I mean... Uh, Will you, will you cast coercion on Athica, please, oh, Scott? Fine. <laughs> Smooth talker. That's that's how I get what I want. <laughs> uh, we had uh, had a question. Uh, when do you guys think this is going to be released? Um, we're still pretty much saying early next year. Yeah. Um, it'll be you know before the summer, if that uh, if that helps. Yeah. You know, spring spring is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, although, well, depends on what part of the country you're in or what part of the globe you're in, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, no, it'll be early next year. Um, it, it depends more on how happy we are with the game and where it's at than anything else, to be honest. Um, oh, we have another question. Could you please hint at if we have ways to counter thralls yet and what the current plans for that are? Thralls being the yeah. sort of analog of the unrest mechanic. I don't even know where that's at. Scott, do you know where that's at? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. We are the most useless dev stream. I am planet. so sorry. That's, that's <laughs> where I love having Brad on because I... He has all the answers. Brad keeps the entire game in his head, more or less, yeah, he, uh, which makes it easier. Yeah, he's like a walking, talking design doc, basically. <laughs> yes. Did we? Oh man, we got to give these guys a cooldown on their fear ability too, because right now oh. a lot of the time they just sit and they spam just, fear oh, forever because yeah, it's got yeah. no cooldown. And the AI thing is like, well, obviously the best thing I could do is cast fear. It's like, <laughs> well, that's fine because <laughs> eventually I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's totally doing it. Uh, uh, that's fine. If so, I have to. Uh, Make use of that cheese tactic. I, uh, I will go. Oh, you no, know, he attacked. There you go. Uh, All mean, right. Was that a counter? No, no, because you countered him to kill him. Oh, okay. Um, we got it. We got to make Sarky able to to found cities too. I know you were talking about that a, a little while oh, back. Oh, oh. Uh, or did he, did he that? He can now. Yes. Yeah, he did. An oh, hooray! Yeah. Actually, I'm building a Urxen hovel over here. Oh, they're so good. So we'll be able to send out some. The I, I've been. Pioneer. I've been working on a, a tyrant game for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, man, I love the Urxen. because yeah. it's one of the special units that the tyrant gets. I mean, you'll see them. You'll see the sorcerer Ooh. king use it. You are totally going to get murdered if you try to. Okay, um, <laughs> you'll see the sorcerer king use them all the time. Um, but they're one of the special units that the warlord, or the, excuse me, the tyrant actually gets to recruit, and they're so good. Yeah. Um, I use them all the time. They're they're tougher. They're not tougher, but they're stronger than soldiers. They're stronger than soldiers, but they can. Um, but they can yeah, pioneer. They can expand. They can, yeah. So not just, having to have a soldier on hand to, you know, escort baby them around. Walk my, or, yeah. Exactly. And like, so I just like I just keep Urxin in with my hero oh, army. Absolutely. And it's like anytime. Uh, it's like, hey, oh, sweet. A shard. Sweet. Plop. Absolutely. Uh, outpost. Yeah, Done. They're a great, uh, great little boon for the. Tyrant. They're so good. And and the other the other warlord unit, uh, or at least the other one I've used, the spearman. I think it's a spearman. Uh, 
is sort of a, a, a super pikeman. Those guys are awesome. They're kind of expensive, not massively expensive. They're kind of expensive. They're that right now. The building to unlock them is pretty expensive. The officer, like, yeah, the yeah, officer's barracks, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna hold off on that. But man, they're so good because they don't take metal, and they murder everyone, and I love them <laughs> the most. Um. So, uh oh, what did the SK just cast there, or what the heck oh. just happened? Oh, did you did know? That uh, strongholds will expand evil. The Shadowlands? Influ- yeah, Shadowlands will I... actually start to ah. uh, come out and tendril out into the world. That totally sucks. It does. <laughs> but it's also kind of awesome that we just saw that. Cause... It is. Did you just. Oh, you didn't break the game. Oh, good. The question is have we gotten the stupid uh, Stalker nerf in? <laughs> not, Answer... not enough of one, anyway, yeah. clearly. <laughs> That's okay. I'm making another Irksome. Oh, they're so good. You need you need all of the Irksen. That's my that's my suggestion Just to you. An army of Irksen. All of them. Oh man, the stalker oh, is totally on. gonna kill you. You are totally gonna die. And no, it's gonna be I'm fine. Hey, does Shield Bash do damage yet? I know we were talking about that too. Uh, uh well, it, do, it does a big shield thing. That's uh, exciting. It does and it not. goes through stuff. <laughs> so. It's a, it's a hell of a shield bash. Come on, man! You just got nothing on this guy. Flame dart. Screw you. The flame dart's not even gonna matter. Oh, oh, 16. That was actually pretty decent damage. Oh, okay, I'll be fine. I'll oh, be fine, man. Oh, I'll be fine. Oh God, you're so doomed. The uh, um, the warlord, man. He starts out so weak. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Oh. Oh man, I am I'm embarrassed for you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a cool death animation. Well, you know, it's funny. He um, the animators feel it's a little over the top. So they're tweaking it. Well, I don't know what to say to that. Other than that, you shouldn't be watching that animation very often. So it might be okay if yeah, it's a little over the top. I, I fought for it. I'm like, I think it's cool. But they, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what ends up going in. Sometimes it's also nice to have very, you know, variants. So. True, true, true. The, uh, but yeah, the, the Warlord, man, he starts out so weak. Yeah. He really does. But he's awesome later, or at least he is right now, until... The fix goes in. I'm going to be so sad when the fix goes in where he no longer gets his weapon damage to his special abilities. At least I think that's what's going on, is that he's getting his we- yeah. the weapon damage bonus. Because you give him, oh, you give him a yeah. short sword right now, yeah. and all of a sudden correction oh, does that like 20 is, that's freaking damage. One thing. I don't think it's going in this next build, but um, weapon, weapon proficiencies will be in uh, oh, very yes. soon. So, so you, you won't, won't be even giving be able a, to give him a sword. Yeah, you won't he's be all crafting swords for your warlords yeah. and your rangers no, and whatnot. No, no. Yeah. And um, and another nice little thing is the um, the starting recipe will be based on. Right now, everybody gets that sword. Um, right. We'll make sure that there's a uh, an appropriate weapon uh, to craft based on your uh, loadout at the beginning. All right. <sighs> So what else have you been working on downstairs there, Scott? Um, I've actually been in bu- – speaking of bugs, I've actually been in bug mode. Apparently, you were able to cast Kill on the Sorcerer King. <laughs> uh, for uh-huh. anybody who doesn't know, Kill is a very, very expensive spell that just obliterates um, late-game enemies, including the Sorcerer King. Apparently. <laughs> so uh, Possibly not. That, that was fixed. Um Getting those weapon proficiencies in. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Oh, man. So much Outposts stuff. take logistics now. That is something I, is, I got in. It gonna, which is going to be a huge problem. Very interesting Cause, man, twist on gameplay there. We probably need to make logistics a lot easier to get because it's yeah. freaking brutal. Yeah. I, it's, I, love, I love limitations like that, though, because... <laughs> You know, all of a sudden things become a choice. It's not a For matter sure. of spamming outposts all over. For it's, sure. Um, so I love that. I I love the limit. I mean, we'll have to obviously compensate on the other end, give you more logistics, make sure that. Um, no, I I agree. You're I not think drowning. That, yeah, I, and that was always part of the original design doc. It just wasn't happening in the yeah. game. Yeah. Um, I agree that it's it's better long term, but like I said, I mean, it's so hard. Like right now, you have one logistics. You have one logistics. That's insane. Yeah. Like, how are you supposed to do anything with that? I this know. is not going to happen. Luckily, so, it's, a, it's a short stream, so I'll be <laughs> fine. 
Uh, so I don't know. I like, I'd love to see, like, maybe there's, there's something we could do to, uh, have like a logistics resource on the map. That would be kind of cool. Um, I don't know. That would require art though. And Chris is going to kill me if I ask for any art. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) let's see. The Gilmoy is amused at the brokenness of Nefaz the warlord, which is, you know, fair enough. I am also amused at his brokenness right now. Uh, honestly, like, I feel like the game is way too hard right now. Um, so having a kind of broken heroes is, is all right. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got to change this. So, oh no, never mind. Dudes, okay. dudes get to walk on out. Let's see. If... Are you gonna go after the barbarian? He's not even gonna do anything to you. He's I, just gonna I wander around him. the outpost, outpost and die. Although he would be free XP for Nefaz, yes. which is all, always and a good he thing. He needs it. So. He does. How That's long true. does he have? Two turns. Ugh. Man, losing five turns just sucks. I want. We might have to turn that down a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I feel five... like five turns is a holdover from LH. And, right. I mean, turns are so yes. crucial. You're yes. losing. It's a and it's a double whammy because now it's um, uh, it takes down the doomsday count. Right. Yeah, yeah. I I think five turns might be too much because like, it's like Sorcerer King is about, you know, the idea is that you have to snowball faster than the SK can win. Yeah. And losing five turns off that snowball is really harsh because so much of your progression is tied to your heroes, Mm -hmm. in particular your first hero. Now, I still think that we need to give that second hero a lot sooner. Um, I wonder where it's at. I have cheats on, so we can see where it's getting placed. But, yeah. Um, I I really think we do because, like, just having that one hero is so limiting. Yeah. And especially on. right now, I don't think he even gets a, a level boost or anything. Like, he starts off at level one. And right. That's kind of painful. Unless, until you cast Tutelage, give oh, her a sure. band of wisdom <laughs> and a couple warrior spirits. There are solutions. And then, like, bam, yeah. she's level seven. I know. And then Varda murders everyone because she is the <laughs> freaking best. I love Varda. She's Varda's going to be uh, back as the starting hero for the uh, priest. Is she? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so are the are the other heroes like? Will they spawn in the world, or are they going to be other like kind of third party heroes that are the ones that you can recruit? I, it, as it's going to be heroes? there's going to be that main group of uh, like six, six or seven yeah. that um, gets sprinkled around. Okay. Uh, and I think that right now the plan is to have uh, two other statues out there somewhere, two other heroes out there that you have to find and go on those quests. Right. Um, but like, do you get? Are there? Uh, is that? Are those drawn from a separate pool of heroes, or are those the right. same like six heroes that are the starting uh, heroes um, for the various classes? Oh, those are those are going to be the starting heroes. So okay. you might you you'll end up with you know a game with Varda. You may end up with the Warlord. And, sure. Um, okay. And we can fun, do some fun stuff with that, where you know different, um, you know, depending on your hero makeup, the DM uh, messes yes. with you in different ways. True. So. True. Uh, let's see. I have a question. I would like to see another tech tree uh, next to spell research. Uh, one to improve buildings, like turning shard shrines into outposts with autocannon laser sharks. And one to improve t- trainable units. Maybe enable trainable units to wield crafted weapons and shields. That's an interesting question. Um, so he's saying like another yeah. tech tree for kind of improving the empire, your empire mm-hmm. more so than like your spell casting or whatever. I don't think that that's probably in the cards. Not a um, whole new tree, but certainly... Stuff uh, like that should be going in the Sovereign Trees. Yeah, like actually sticking it right in the Sovereign Tree is right. an option. Because right now, um, a lot of the trees feel weak when it they comes do. to... Um, any Anything that does anything building-related really should do more than give you a building. Like, right. it shouldn't be the first Unlocks step. whatever building. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, thanks, it unlocked one building that... It should be like, here is a arsenal of new options yeah. for you yeah i i agree i think that sovereign trees overall just feel kind of weak yeah i think they're they need, i they mean they were help. intended to be let's get these seeds in yeah for let's sure get the thematic feel down right. um and then it's easy it's it's surprisingly easy to beef them up and uh iterate on them yeah so. yeah and that's that's a lot of where the ultimate quality and the ultimate fun of sorcerer king comes from is going to come from is the like giving players really awesome stuff. And part of that is sovereignty. Part of that is spells. Part of that is items. Like I just did a whole giant doc of like, of suggestions for spells and items for the game. Now that we have some of those other systems that are be coming in, like the combat rounds um, and something that Scott hacked together where we can basically have uh, spells trigger at the beginning of combat. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that can be tied to various things. They can be tied to items. They can be tied to city enchantments. They can be tied to sovereign skills. They can be tied to hero abilities. They can be tied to in- intrinsic unit things. Yeah, all, all kinds, kinds of, of stuff. stuff. Um, which is super exciting, which gives us a lot more options of stuff that we can do and things that we can make that are cool because that's what we're kind of missing right now. What I feel is missing from the game. It's like, you should never have like, ah, uh, I guess I, I guess I'll build a soldier cause I need a soldier. I need like a dude. And I mean, to some extent you need that, but like you should never have like, oh, I guess I'll pick clairvoyance because I need to work my way down this tree to yeah. get to this other thing. Like everything you pick mm-hmm. in your sovereign tree should feel awesome. Yeah. Everything you pick in your hero tree should feel awesome. Yeah. Every time you get something more than one of the basic items, you know, chainmail is going to kind of be chainmail, right? And you kind of, you, we need that to be, to be there to have that kind of starting, you know, stuff. Uh, but like, the more advanced, when you unlock a recipe and then you make it, like, that should feel awesome. You should be getting, you know, badass flaming swords that shoot laser sharks mm-hmm. and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, rather than the last thing that Sorcerer King needs is, you know. Another plus five. Exactly. Yeah. And and so that's what we're trying to really have, what we're trying to really come up with and get into the game. Now that, like Scott said, as we're coming toward the end of, of feature development... Not, not the end necessarily, but at least getting those major pieces yep. in. And we can start looking at what are the awesome things that we can do you know, to, to make playing the game just feel more fun. Because I heard that games are supposed to be fun. <laughs> um, so we're going to maybe work on that. Uh, let's see. Improving trainable units. Now, the thing about trainable units is that we pro- they probably won't ever get weapons and shields. Um, it gets really, yeah. it starts to get really overpowered really quickly. And while overpowered is good in Sorcerer King to a certain extent, if we if we restrict weapons and shields, it, it lets those units retain their sort of iconic ability, or their iconic sort of, I guess, attack power and their attack abilities and stuff like that, mm-hmm. so that it doesn't end up being so that they're not total blank slates. Like they need to have something that defines them. Yeah. Right. And, and we've decided that kind of weapons and shields are what define them. And then we don't have to worry about making sure that like, cause then you have to get into other, you know, there's, there's already every unit has freaking what? 12 inventory slots. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of inventory slots to be filling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so by leaving weapons and shields to be kind of the iconic hero things, it just leaves that bit of differentiation in there that I think is something that's useful. Uh, like one of the things that I think that that Stardock has not done a ton of in the past, and one of the, and this is something that I've kind of been stumping for in some of our games, is the idea of giving players more interesting choices by restricting them in certain ways. So, like for example, Master of Magic, which is a game that we all know and love. The races in Master of Magic were almost more interesting for what they couldn't build versus what they could. So, like, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember specific examples. Uh, you know, the like a race that doesn't get to build archers but that gets awesome mm-hmm. infantry. Yeah, that's something totally, and that's something that's in LH to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But in not, we could go way farther because, yeah. like, uh, whatever the race is, uh, the 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 trogs can't use ranged weapons on their on their trained units um but they get like super axes and berserk and stuff um but we can even push that way farther absolutely in in a lot of cases but the point that i'm making in regards to sorcerer king is having those those things restricted it allows us to make sure that weapons are super awesome and yeah we could do things like make certain weapons are hero only and certain weapons are are able to be equipped by units but then that starts getting muddy too like i don't know i i I think there's a lot of things we can do to make trained units more interesting without going down that route. And and again, sovereign abilities are absolutely absolutely places that we can make trained units a lot more interesting. Yeah. You know, give the, oh, the yeah. give yeah. the tinker something that like makes every trained unit when they die, they have like, you know, clockwork some backpacks yeah. that explode when they <laughs> die so they have like a self-destruct that only yeah. hurts enemies or something like that. Like that's the kind of cool stuff that yeah. you could put in the sovereign tree. Um, yeah, I like the idea of like throwing things in the sovereign tree, like upgrading, you know, upgrading different abilities for these guys, and um, yeah, I 
I could see where the different weapon upgrades could be fun, but yeah, as, as, I don't know. It's in, yeah, it's 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 a large question. At some point, at some point, you have you have to make those differentiations. You have to draw right. those lines in the sand, and um, I personally like the line in the sand being okay. You can put a, a accessories on these guys, but in general, you know the, the big stuff. To some extent, a soldier is a soldier. Yeah. Um, the, which also comes back to the the point about priority, priorities in that like, if we're gonna make weapons and armor for, uh, trainable units, then that's something else that we're not making, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, is that cool enough that that's where we want to spend our effort? What have you done? Oh, the wisp just doesn't have a point. Oh I yeah, see. yeah, I see. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, um, going back to uh, like breaking the rules, setting up, s setting up rules to break them, like everybody getting an totally. archer, and then saying, okay, this guy doesn't get an archer. Um, that's one thing that we're really looking at uh, with um, spicing up the the trees. Like everybody gets a clairvoyance track right now, right? So we set up this rule where, okay, you get um, people more spell learn casts more spellcasts, yep. more spellcasts. Um, I would really like to remove that for either the tyrant or the uh, commander uh, warrior. There's going to be a warrior-esque um, sovereign. sovereign going in. Um, I'd like to remove that and turn that into like turn that into something else. You know, every city gives you a new spellcaster. Sure. Um, you know, every time you kill a lieutenant, you get two new spellcasts. So take that rule and bend it in an interesting right. way to. Um, you know, spice up the, the different sovereigns. For sure. Got some uh, questions I wanted to get to. Uh, is this uh, a spiritual successor to Master of Magic? Is, isn't is every 4X <laughs> fantasy game try to bill itself as a spiritual successor to Master of Magic? Uh, I mean, certainly we love Master of Magic. And, I mean, I think everybody at Stardock, everybody on the team has played plenty of Master of Magic. Um, this isn't intended to be directly a spiritual successor a lot of the a lot of what makes Sorcerer King unique in terms of the asymmetry and you know the doomsday counter and all that kind of stuff is very very different than Master of Magic. Uh, you know, Master of Magic was was much more of a sort of traditional 4x, although you could argue that it's one of the games that spawned the tradition mm -hmm. more so than followed it. But um, you know, where you have evenly matched rival empires doing doing various things, whereas Sorcerer King is very much not. Yeah, Sorcerer uh, King kind of takes it's another instance of taking the rules. You know, we right. all we've all played a four X fantasy at this point. We have, right. there are many awesome options out there, and this is us saying, okay, we kind of know the rules. Let's play with them a little bit and have that accumulation to an awesome boss battle. That right, you know, RP if it's an RPG world, it needs an RPG boss battle for sure. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Alstein wants his foofy archers and bards and stuff in every fantasy game. Well, there will be plenty of foofy archers and bards and stuff. <laughs> I was just complaining to Scott earlier that we actually need to make our foofiness a little tougher <laughs> because, um, like, clerics are totally pointless to build right now. Yeah. Because there are so many freaking archers. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get a little bit of threat in the, against the Sorcerer King, there's freaking shadow scouts everywhere. Yeah. And all they do is kill clerics yeah. all day. <laughs> like, they just... All day. That's all they do. So... We need to work on that. Yeah. But, you know, that's it's all balanced stuff. And, like, balanced stuff is – it's not easy to fix, but it's, like, it doesn't take development time. It takes play time. Yeah. And even is, then, I was uh, I was telling Adam this before we started. I was wa listening to last week's stream uh, where Brad was playing, and he would just offhandedly go, oh, we, you know, we really need to change this. We really need to do <laughs> this. And I had the editor open, and I think I fixed, like, five, you know, balance issues that he pointed out as, like, now um, – uh, the dwarf attack gets a cooldown, mm. um, and there were some misbalances. Like you didn't get uh, the big, the real big one was um, you weren't getting revive land quick enough uh, as the nature guardian. So oh. switch some stuff around there to make sure uh, that was in your arsenal as soon as possible. Totally, um, but yeah, it's all it's balances. Yeah, it just takes gameplay testing and yeah. So as far as a patch tomorrow. Uh, are there any other big uh, bugs or, or long-standing bugs that you're excited to get out of the way? Sorry, I put you on the spot with like no prep time, which oh I apologize gosh. for. Bugs that are fun to 
I want to just get all the books. <laughs> Actually, iterate for me. Getting all this stuff in is what that's like the numero uno bug on my list is. I want to be able to play through each sovereign, get their get their thematics down. So it, every single one of those sovereigns feels different. Um, actually, we made some really good progress on um, random map generation. It oh. wasn't on my list, but I saw some really cool random ge- uh, generated maps nice. being made. So um, that's not in uh, – unfortunately, that's not in tomorrow's build, but um, in Beta 3, you'll be getting to play oh, we, around with – We do have randoms in Beta 3. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. That'll make some people happy. There have been some a couple of uh, prolific posters very annoyed at the lack of random maps, which, you know, I yeah. feel – I, I'm a random it's map hard. guy yeah, myself. Yeah, once you so. know, once once you know the map, man. Yeah. The, the exploration part of the yeah. equation just is diminished. And the map is so important to Sorcerer King, just with with the design of the game. You know, the difference in the way that a game plays out, map to map, is just so huge. Um, totally right. I'm just pumping out Urxin and this. Dude, they're so good. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nice. And I don't I don't necessarily mind that. Like I feel like the 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 sovereign specific units probably should be a little bit ahead of the power curve, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because otherwise you don't build them. Yeah. Um, and they should feel cool. You should be like, man, I do want to build Urxin as a warlord. Or as a, I keep saying warlord when I mean to say tyrant. Oh. So frustrating. Um, uh, we had a good question in the chat. Um, can you counter the threat rating toward the SK somehow? Um, like, so can you lower your threat rating at all? there are a couple of... Isn't that a priest thing? To a certain extent, like Guardian, like those. The Guardian, the Ranger, he has uh, certain abilities that mean, that keep him from getting attacked. Okay. Uh, or he could. Um, yeah, right now, threat is super weird right now, though, too. Like, you max out your threat really quickly yeah. right now, which is pro- which is just another balance thing. Yeah. Um, I think that the, but I think that the, uh, the Tyrant has Betrayal, which is supposed to knock it down to zero. Oh. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Totally. So so yeah. So tomorrow, bug fix patch, uh, December beta three, random maps, mm-hmm. priest sovereign, bunch of balance improvements. Hopefully. I wonder. If I've been seeing a lot of cool uh, minor rage parts. Oh yeah. And fixing the stupid squished portraits. Those drive me crazy. Like in the in the dialogue window, in half of our dialogue windows, you see like whatever the artwork is, it's like oh, squished to the wrong aspect ratio. Yeah. Oh, it drives I me crazy. Them talking about that, I think they may have a new tag going into Quest or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> on our, so many things on our radar. Oh. So many. People can no longer hear Scott. Well, I'm gonna kill the stream anyway because we don't really have anything else to talk about right now. Um, so I apologize for the audio issue. Um, it's probably just Scott talking quietly can you hear me now <laughs> oh that's right they're it's, a little behind yeah there's the lag um but uh no oh let's see uh we do have a question if you lose a town does that lower your threat rating to the sk i don't know maybe it should that's an interesting question yeah i don't know i'm not going to talk too much anymore because i don't know if they're <laughs> i like it that's a good idea <laughs> um that is a good idea because man, losing a town sucks, yeah. and it's something that is probably going to happen because he has a lot more dudes than you do. Yeah, uh, I was super annoyed. I just lost a town in my in my game that I was playing. So, I uh, got a compliment on the mountains and the look. Uh, oh, good. From Thank you. Somebody in the chat. Thank you very much. Uh, the mountains, I know we've worked on quite a bit um, to get in a better space than they were. Um, and they do totally look better. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll be back next week. You'll get a patch tomorrow, like I said. Um, and then we'll be back next week with more Sorcerer King. Hopefully be able to show off a little early Beta 3 stuff. Oh, yeah. We'll see. But take your issues to the forums. We read the forums. Brad is on the forum. Brad's the lead designer. He's on the forums all the freaking time. Uh, he reads them religiously. Uh, and we definitely take note when uh, when there's a lot of people talking about something. And, and try to improve whatever that thing is or respond or, or explain, you know, our reasoning on stuff. So uh, that's the deal. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you later on.